Okay, hi everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I hope you're having a nice day. I can guess you're looking at a beautiful a beautiful lady right beside me, but don't worry, she's going to introduce herself in a bit. However, we brought you something very exciting and you know amazing today. Okay, so if you're just joining us, don't worry, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um join us as we go through this session. Okay. Hi, Dr. Evelyn. Hi, hi, Fuego. Hi, hi. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, yeah, I am. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for featuring me today. Yeah. Oh, thank you for joining. Um, would you please introduce yourself? I'm very sure a lot of people are looking. Who is this lady there? Who is this lady? Yeah. So, um, I'm Marilyn Amizu, and um. Yeah, I am a double Global Talent Award um, winner. <laughs> That's for UK and Australia, and that is on digital technology sector. So my expertise is around data and AI. So I'm an AI um, researcher and as well as an architect. So basically, I help organizations to you know solve problems related to how to use AI to incorporate AI into the organization to improve efficiency. Mm -hmm. And but before I got to that phase, I um, started off my bachelor's in electrical electronic engineering, and then mm -hmm. I got my master's and then my PhD at the University of Leicester in computer science. So that has been a journey from you know my good old days in Niger to getting um, several scholarships that took me through school and um, in the course of that journey as well, that's when I encountered the global talent visa. And you know, I went for it. So the good thing, probably, I'm going to share a lot more as we move along, is that I was able to position myself, um, mm -hmm. you know, to qualify for that visa by the things I was doing, the different activities I engaged in in the course of my education and in mm -hmm. the course of you know my migration journey. So and that positioned me well for the global talent visa. Yes, yeah, so you know my expertise in digital technology. That's the root. I got the global talent. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So and yeah, I just love helping people. I'm a visionary for Scholarling. You can see there Scholarling.com, um, where we help people really fulfill their dreams around you know um, becoming global talent. So whether that global talent is to get on the global stage through education or through work or through just migrating um through this global <laughs> thing. so that is my uh, sorry just, oh so okay. sorry for the interruption we had to we had to take a tea break all right so um dr Marilyn, would you please continue yeah so i was saying that um at scholarly um we really help people realize their goals and dreams um, to becoming global talent. So my concept of a global talent is really one that has that visibility and skills, expertise, and opportunity to really play at the global stage. So that could be through education, through your career. And um, yeah, so that's really what we are passionate about. And that's what we help people do it, um, do whether through the global talent visa and migration path helping them you know get the endorsement or through helping them um realize their educational dreams and, mm -hmm. and getting admissions and scholarships and or through um the work routes to actually prepare their application for you know to get job in mm -hmm. the global stage as well that's absolutely amazing. I must say, well done for for the things you do for the world. Thank you so much for that. I know a few people urge global talent visa. Da, 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 da. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes. She's still going to talk about it. Trust me. Um. So I just want to ask, how did you hear about these visas? Okay. Um. So I cannot remember the very, very first time I heard about it, but I know um that one of the few times I heard about it then, it was through a YouTube, you know, just came across, stumbled on a YouTube video mm -hmm. about it. And the first time actually 
I heard about it, it was looking like it's impossible for me to apply for this. Mm. And I did also, I think someone shared the link. Maybe that was the first time someone mm -hmm. shared the link and I just went on it and I saw everything that was listed there mm -hmm. and I just disqualified myself. Mm. I addressed myself immediately and said, no, this is, mm. in fact, the name Global Talents, it's intimidating on its mm. own. Global Talents, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not, not qualified for this at all. I have very sure a lot of people are on this table. Yeah, yeah, exactly. very sure a lot of people are on this table as well. Exactly. But we're not going to the table anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so they sometimes they use these names that are so exceptional talent, mm -hmm. global talent, and it makes you feel okay. Maybe I need to be a Nobel Prize winner before mm -hmm. I can actually mm -hmm. um, be qualified for it, but the most important thing is being able to meet the criteria, understanding what is the vision behind mm -hmm. um what the that particular country is trying to achieve here they are trying to get the maybe highly skilled workers mm. who are highly skilled at what they do in target sectors mm. you know, coming to or migrate to that country so you look you'll be looking at do i actually have the skills to mm -hmm. meet that criteria and mm -hmm. be eligible for this rather than just being bent on okay the name how how it's worded and you know the hype around it i i absolutely understand i think i bumped into it some time ago but i've not had time to actually look into it and what it entails i might have to after this video okay so i'll use myself as an example so i'm going to create a persona that we're going to walk through it so that people can understand the the, the next thing i want to ask is me as favor for instance what do i need um what do i need to know about these visas and how do i plan like how can i plan when i apply for these visas to get it okay you're bringing in your marketing the persona what is the persona here i thought you wanted to give me like you know you're you're being here you... <laughs> okay so a persona is like creating a, a fake or real person just like you're, you're targeting this person so favor is uh, an undergraduate or a graduate of marketing that wants to get the global talent visa what do i need to do to get it yes yeah, so um uh, the first thing is to really understand your eligibility right so okay. when people we meet different kinds of persons so there are persons who yes at that point where or I really don't know what this global talent visa is about. Perfect. Can you tell me more about it. And then some persons are like, um, the next question after that, that first, okay, this is what the global talent is about, would be, am I eligible mm. for, for it? And um, by that point, you're you're going to be looking at their profile to say, mm -hmm. okay, here are the indicators to your eligibility, and here are the things we think about your profile as to whether you'll be eligible or not. So the first thing, yes, would be understand this is what the Global Talent Visa is about. These are the mm -hmm. sort of persons they are looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and then go for that to know, uh, understand your eligibility. Now, in terms of eligibility, I do see as well that it is not a binary thing to say. It's not like, it, yes, you're eligible or no. I mean, there's some profile that really, really may be off the track. And it depends on the sector. Again, when the concept of the global talent visa, it's not that if you are not eligible, it means you're not a global talent. It just means that this, um, the countries are looking for something specific, right? Is based on maybe their uh, overall strategy, the sort of um, workforce they're looking for, the, the economy, what they need for their economy, right? It's not a, always a factor of maybe you are an exceptional person on mm -hmm. your own rights or not mm -hmm. so if you you might actually be very good at what you do but then based on their criteria based on what they are looking for you might not fit into that mode right and then and there are so many migration options so global talent is you know can be one of them but then it could also be some other migration options so those are the things that you know you would have to factor in would I be eligible for this? And if I'm not eligible, the next thing would be what can I then do? What would favor do to be eligible? And that might be that, okay, you're going to spend some time 
working on your profile, working on yourself to, in order to attain to that level, especially you know, if it's along the line of your interest and passion. You know, so for example, we could say when, when we do that initial assessment, we could say, okay, you are not very far off for what they are looking for, but these are the gaps, right? So these are the things you need to work on and you spend some time to strengthen your, your profile and be ready for that application. Yes, yeah, so those are the initial things and like to, I would say, to start off with. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> it is beginning to get clear. However, I want to ask, so do I need a job to apply for this visa? Okay, um, the answer to that is, now just for the, um, in the interest of cl clarity and for the audience, Mm -hmm. We are talking about the Australian and the UK. And the UK, yes. Please. Now, yes. So, um, generally, if I'm to talk on a general basis for both Australia and UK, it is not necessary. In fact, okay, maybe one, we'll take it one after the other. Maybe we'll talk about Australia, then we jump to UK. So we don't, we don't, we don't get um. In the mix of, yeah. Okay. So, but it, it, for that job aspect, it is for UK. You don't need a job. Okay. You don't need a job um, to apply. So mm -hmm. the only thing is that the achievements from your job, right, whether present or previous job, could actually count towards maybe your contribution in your sector. So, for example, they are going to be looking for um, the sort of work you've done in that sector. Maybe it might be present, it might be past, right? And they, you would usually have, for example, the... Um, UK application will require you to have evidence from the past five years. Okay, so give me a, can you give an example of evidence? Okay, so for example, um, let's say for the job aspect in particular, let's say you uh, let, let's use favors persona now marketing, um, mm -hmm. and you're applying for the digital technology sector. Maybe you've been doing marketing in the tech space. Okay. So, Looking at um, you know some examples of your the marketing work that you've done. So, for example, let's say you've actually um, you know there are articles that that you've written and it's been published in high profile you know venues, right? Or you've appeared in the media and you've gained a lot of viewership in the media, maybe um, in a radio station. So those sort of things that show that you are a leader or show that you are recognized in your field, you know, as it relates to the digital technology sector. So those are the sort of evidence that they'll be looking for. But it's very sector specific. So depending on the, the sector, it's aligned to the endorsing body. So if it's digital technology, there is an endorsing body for digital technology. If it's research, there's an endorsing body for research. So you just need to understand again coming back to eligibility based on my profile based on you know what i do and my future aspirations mm -hmm. this the right routes for me to my through okay thank you very much oh you already mentioned the endorsement i wanted to ask maybe you can name a few but again you mentioned um if it is research there is a body if it is digital it is sector specific do you by chance know maybe names of some and maybe in your space digital technology or something like that? Just yeah, they, for um for the um digital technology sector is the technician. Technician. Okay, so technician. sometimes you hear them call it technician visa. Then for um arts, you also have there is a body for arts, you know, the British academy um mm -hmm. arts academy or thereabouts so and then for research it depends if it's engineering there is the royal um engineering society and um mm. and the the rest royal society for sciences as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that, that makes this, sense. this is we're still talking about uk here right yes so we've, we've talked about uk now mm -hmm. so do you want to talk about australia then yeah, for Australia, um, it works slightly different 
in terms of endorsing body here, there for the application, there are two stages. There is the first stage, which is the endorsements, mm -hmm. both for UK and Australia. And then the second stage is the actual visa application. So what we do help with as Colalin is really the endorsements phase, because mm -hmm. that's where you are we are bringing in the technical expertise to help mm -hmm. you put together your application. So once you have that endorsement, you can then go up, go ahead to apply for the visa. So the um, for Australia, they they have priority sectors for the application. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the body that they they have is just we just have two endorsement body. Mm -hmm. are more of organizations that can nominate you for the application rather than endorsement body for the the roots. So you don't have endorsement body for for example digital technology endorsing body for the application itself it's open to everybody but if you are looking for a nominating organization then there are two at least as a, the last time i checked there are two organizations mm -hmm. you have engineers australia and the the one for um acs australian computer society for um those in tech right and the reason you have them is for Australian application, one of the criteria is that you would need a nominator. So that nominator could be um, like a citizen, Australian citizen or permanent resident or New Zealand citizen, mm -hmm. or it could be an organization. So that's where the engineers Australia and the Australian Computer Society, they come in to nominate the candidates. Mm -hmm. yeah, but other than that, to apply, you just send in your application, just a mm -hmm. just portal where you apply. Mm -hmm. um, but for UK, you need to apply through an endorsement body. Body. Yeah. Th th those are the ones that will review your application mm -hmm. and then because they have assessors in mm -hmm. that area of um, specialization. But for Australia, it's just you, it's like one pool, but mm -hmm. then you take your sector. If you are um, digital technology, they've got, I think, about, if I did, um, maybe 10, I think they're about mm -hmm. priority sectors in mm -hmm. Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's fantastic. So, um, do you need a certain level of education to apply for this visa? Yeah, that again depends on the routes you're applying through, right? Okay. So if you are applying, through the research routes, mm -hmm. then a PhD is going to be beneficial having mm -hmm. a PhD. Otherwise, it doesn't really count as much, right? Because it's remember this visa is all about your achievement. So mm -hmm. again, education is not the only factor. If you have a PhD for the research route, but it mm -hmm. was for your achievements in the sector, where, um, you know how you've been recognized, what mm -hmm. you achieved you know, in your career so education can be an add-on you know beneficial for mm -hmm. research or academia roots other than that it's not really going to affect any your application much. Yeah. okay that, that makes so much that makes so much sense so uh, what what's the duration of, of of the visa take for instance how long does it take to apply then take for instance you run out of the visa what's the what's the renewal process like okay um so this type of visa let me speak for uk now this type of visa is the type of visa that is called the u the, for the uk global talent visa mm -hmm. it's the type of visa that is called a route to settlement visa so which means it's a visa that can lead you to get in permanent residency what we call indefinite leave to remain in the uk so which means by the end of the visa or by the expiration of the visa if you've met all the conditions of your visa and your residency then you should be you know applying for permanent residency in which case the case of renewal does not apply the only time a renewal would now apply is maybe you've not met all the conditions of your residency and then you need to renew the, the visa and they have set criteria on how to go about renewing it. Then for Australia, 
Australian um, Global Talent Visa is a permanent resident, is a permanent visa. So it's when you get the visa, you've already gotten permanent residence. Mm. That's, that's a lot. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. How, how many years? Okay. Uh, I know, I know, I know. I, I'm not sure if it is three years or five years for UK. Is it three years or five years? Again, it depends on the endorsement body. Some mm. of and the route. So it could be three years, it could be five years, depending on the endorsement body and the track that you apply to. So if for some endorsement bodies that have got exceptional promise. So exceptional promise is like someone who is really at the early stages of their career. Mm -hmm. That would be five years for some endorsing bodies too. And the exceptional talents would be um, um, for three years. So it depends on both the track and the endorsing body. For some endorsing bodies, you know, whether you are early career or not, you would still get three years. Okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, okay, so what advice would you give individuals considering to apply for this visa? Okay. Um, people like Favor. <laughs> people like Favor. <laughs> yeah, so what, what the first, um, like I mentioned earlier, well, before that phase, we need to, we need to plan. Okay. So like, at the point of consideration, um, that's the point where you need to get lots of information, get all your information, start planning. Like for me, before I even got to the stage of applying, I think I spent you know, some months really gathering information, checking if I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. Also need to check, am I even financially ready for this? Am I emotionally ready? Because there is the emotion, every the stress that comes with it, the pressure of, putting those that work together I mean it's not a walk in the park to put that application together which is also what, what we try to do at scholarly to really help people alleviate that whole stress of the process am mm -hmm. i getting it right how do i put all this my experience relevant experience into an application that is going to be sound and that is going to be you know top notch for for this application because it's a very very rigorous process mm. so, and you don't want to invest all that time and you end up putting okay. something that is, you know it's one thing that i just remember the case of one of the persons we worked um, we coached and in her case it's not even a question of she didn't put an application together you could be putting an application together but what you're putting together and does not align with what they're looking for mm. so, yeah you could spend months but then those months were effort in the wrong direction mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. everything you're doing you're not really meeting up with what they are looking for mm -hmm. at the end of the day you might end up not being successful like the case of that lady and mm -hmm. where she met us at that point where she had already applied and yeah. it happened that she was rejected so it, it was more like a reworking the entire application restructuring it putting things in the right place so it's important to get the right information and to really plan like i said you know migration can be it's it, it's it might not always be a sprint it can be a marathon especially for australia where you could put up your application and it could take like a year Hmm. It could take six months for some persons. It could take one year, um, one month, or a few weeks. So you really there are uncertainties around when to get a response. This is not the case for UK. UK has more. You have more certainty on at least I will get a response, even if the response is not successful. At least I'm, I'm getting this response in the next five weeks. Hmm. But the Australian one, it could drag hmm. a long, for a long time. So you need to have all of that at the back of your mind and have a plan, a strategy. And yeah, if you're looking to really put that plan together, this is also where we can support you and, and coach you through 
how to plan so you can have your plan a plan b plan c and you have clarity on how to go about it as well that, that makes so much sense um i believe it's been an exceptional session hearing more about global talent visa i am also learning myself again you know we're using favor as a persona favor is interested in applying for the visa and she doesn't know anything what are the things she needs to do? She needs to understand that, oh, do I fit into this category of visa? She needs to know what kind of um, sector she fits into. Take, for instance, I am a marketer. Uh, I can assure you one thing. I would never, no, no I would use the word never. I might never function well in the biology or chemistry department. So imagine I want to apply for a global talent visa. And then, oh, just because I had it's interesting, oh, I mean, it, it leads to... Um, permanent residency and then jump into the chemistry you can imagine the level of unfortunately we can't yeah I, I, you know the rest of the story okay so thank you very much dr Marilyn. i i wanted to ask one more thing again and um are there any strategy or or knowledge that helps you during your process when you're applying for yours that that can be really helpful to other people yeah um so walking back to the things i did right and also having helped several persons through the process you know we get better at you know at it especially the you know what works what doesn't work what could lead to rejection mm -hmm. by the way um also to make your audience aware on the uk when i applied for the uk when i got it on first trial but the australian mm -hmm. one i was rejected the first time I applied, right? So that's to, again, if you are watching and maybe you've been rejected before, yeah. as well, that does not mean it's a no-go area for you as mm -hmm. well. You know, mm -hmm. I've been rejected and the next time I apply, I applied some of those lessons I learned mm -hmm. from the first application to put a stronger application and I got accepted. And those are the things that, from that, the things we learn from my experience and also the experience of other candidates, that's where the experience of actually coaching people and helping them avoid those mistakes coming. You know, mm -hmm. so um, for me, it is the, being organized is is very very important because you could have lots to say, but if you don't put it in the right place, it will be all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. you, like you favor, you are multi talented, you. I, and you can have like so many things to say or to put exactly. together in your application. Right? But it needs to be structured in a way that it's understandable. You know, it's clear and it can sell you. It's about selling yourself. It's like mm. you have to sell yourself. So you need to not be scared <laughs> to really sell yourself and blow your trumpet, but do it in a way that it is, it's honest about your what you have actually done. You know, mm -hmm. it's portraying you in the mm -hmm. right way as well. So these are some of the bits and lessons and things we keep learning as well as we keep working with, with yeah. people. That's absolutely um, amazing. So how have you um, utilized your visa to network with professionals in the industry or um, organization you work or all of that? Yeah, I mean, um, one of the beautiful things about the Global Talent Visa is that it gives you that flexibility that you wouldn't get on some other visas, right? Some other visas, I, I guess you may have heard or come across these layoffs happening across industries, right? People mm -hmm. getting laid off and mm -hmm. how devastating it could be. Perhaps mm -hmm. your family, you're already on a visa and... Mm -hmm. Maybe the company sponsored you. I've seen those cases several times. Some people mm -hmm. even come to us and like, okay, how do I, how do I switch to global talent visa? Because they are the challenges I'm having. I'm sort of restricted at my workplace because of the mm. kind of visa I'm on. My employer is sponsoring me, and therefore, it's like I'm tied. <laughs> yeah, You're quite tied. Tied. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that flexibility yeah, yeah. even when you're looking for opportunities you're really tied to only mm. the companies that can sponsor you and which means your negotiation power is so low you're going to really go with whatever they put out there on the table because 
for you primarily that visa is like the primary thing you being stable with your family where you are is the primary thing so you overlook every other thing that they dish out to you so i say that alone gives that i call it peace of mind visa like you have that peace of mind you have that flexibility you know to really do what you love not being restrained um, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that has given me that um opportunity to really connect mm -hmm. on things i really want to work on mm -hmm. and people like i want to work with organizations i want to work with and also you know the fact that it just as I'm, as I'm having this chat with you as well this sort of engagement and collaboration mm -hmm. having the opportunity to share my experiences experiences mm -hmm. of people that i've um, engaged with as well and to support them like you you said information is um power yeah. when we're talking of camera like information <laughs> is oil <laughs> yes. so, I, say, I say that all the time yeah yeah way. so if you have the right information at least it's a step forward to actually mm -hmm. uh, get into your dreams so i cherish this sort of opportunity to engage people to share my experiences to tell them here is what is possible so that at least you can have it at the back of your mind like i mm -hmm. said when i was actually preparing myself for this visa i didn't know this visa existed so mm -hmm. i was doing things that was taking me in that direction so when the mm -hmm. opportunity came i was almost prepared for it because i've been doing those things so it could just be a factor of oh maybe i'm not even ready but i know that this thing is there is an option and probably maybe i'm studying now you know and probably in two years time when i'm done with my program in three years time i'm going to be ready if mm. I'm doing those things or at least i can even understand what is the strategy of this country every country has a strategy, strategy. every country has an action plan those action plans could be 10 year five year action plan and just by also being strategic as a person to put yourself in that right position maybe uh, by the time you are done with the, what you're doing currently you're going mm -hmm. to be in the right place to harness those opportunities that come along the line so it's all about being prepared mm -hmm. to being at the right place and doing the right thing so that when the time comes you're not going to be stranded and at a disadvantaged position thank you very much i believe you've had um I believe okay now i'll use myself for for example i believe you've had a lot of things written for every single person going to watch or watching this video right now maybe you're eating your popcorn or munching or your favorite snack this is to tell you that you can restart you can kick start you can redo you can achieve if global talent visa is one thing you want to push forward it's something you want to try to achieve within uh, maybe the next one year exactly what this conversation is about is how to help you get it right i hope you've been able to learn from dr marilyn and our persona favor not my own favor anyways but, <laughs> but i hope you've been able to learn i, one I one love one. the persona thing <laughs> <laughs> so um thank you to everyone joining us um for this session thank you so much dr marilyn thank you for sharing your time with us I mean, time is money, just like information is wealth. You know, again, I, I created, created that quote. If it does exist, please do us share the uh, the author. But in just my head, I, I tell you, um, information is wealth, time is money. Thank you so much for the time. If you. you want to move forward or if you want to learn more about Global Talent Visa and you want consultation, feel free to reach out to www. Okay, just go to the website, www scholarlane.com and book a consultation let's see how far and how much you can help a lot of people achieve their goals thank you very much if you're not subscribed to the channel no that is all shades of wrong no don't do that just go below click on the um subscribe button and keep turn on your post notification because of course you put some juicy information coming and then we won't audit no mm -mm, we're not Thomas we won't doubt either but look forward to getting more information Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.